Peace and love, beautiful people. This is Kenny Allen, singer, songwriter, producer, coming to you live and direct from Addis Ababa to tell you about my musical journey, my journey to forever. I was born in Washington, D.C. to a musical family. My mother is a music teacher. She taught in the schools for 30 some years. My father is a jazz drummer. I spent most of my afternoons after school at Sewell Music Conservatory in Washington, D.C. playing piano, experimenting with instruments. Uh, as time went on, I started composing music, writing my own songs. Uh, when I, in my early teens, I started working with four-track recorders and multi-tracking and composing music, playing different instruments. Uh, Moving forward, I went to college, and uh, after my first year of college, I uh, hooked up with uh, my, my main brother, Sentai's J. Romeo, who had a song that he wanted to add music to. And I had been composing and producing music since I was very young, so we made this record, made this song, and then uh, we started a group, which was kind of like Boys to Men, a cappella. From there, we started learning guitars and basses and things like that. We actually performed at the University of Maryland for a talent show. We got booed, started by one of my ex-girlfriends, but uh, it's okay because that was a, a great launching point. Uh, we took some meetings in New York with the uh, EMI producers, uh, we hooked up with MC Search uh, from Third Base, and uh, had a lot of great things going on. Uh, from there, we started to record in professional studios. We made uh, our first demo tape uh, at a, a place called Central Recording Studios with uh, Funky Ned from Rare Essence. Uh, we had great opportunities. We performed for Puffy, for Jam Master J, for Heavy D, for a lot of people. We had a great ride coming along. Uh, and at that certain point, I decided that I would like to pursue a solo career, uh, making music and producing music on my own. In about 1997, I hooked up with Sean the Rick Rickman. We recorded my first record called Coco. And that led me to some musicians and a community uh, in the U Street area in Washington, D.C., which is very heavily populated by Ethiopians. And folks like Wes Felton and Raheem Devon led me to an artist named Wayna. I was performing with Wayna, and uh, the promoter of the show, Emmanuel Mokria, was opening up a club in Addis Ababa called Harlem Jazz. And he asked me if I wanted to come to Ethiopia for six months for a residency, and I came and that was 12 years ago, and I'm still here in Ethiopia. I came to Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, on November 28, 2005. Got right into it, starting to perform at Harlem Jazz with a great bunch of veteran musicians called the Four Star Band, Bibi Shah, Joe, Dawit, Tamera. It was a wonderful experience. We created a scene, we created a movement of music, live music, reviving live music. We blended Motown with Mahmoud Ahmed, and that was just an amazing time in Ethiopia, amazing time in Addis Ababa. After that, we started working, or I started working with Mahari Brothers. What a great movement that was. It was really an uplifting and a youthful experience. And moving forward, I started my own band called the 251 Band. And we really, really uh, came together to support the first album that I did in Ethiopia called the 251. You can call her Nene, you can call her Renee, you can call her my mom. Mom, I want to thank you for being so patient with me. I do have a big dream. And Ethiopia is unfortunately so far away, but it's a part of the dream. But I want to give this to you. I love you so much.
So after releasing the 251 in about 2009, I started to get really hungry to perform my original music here in Ethiopia. So I decided to take a little bit of, of a break from the live music scene, and then I got involved in radio. I started uh, at the first English radio station, Afro FM, had a great program called Pulse. It was four, five days a week, four hours a day. And in that time, I really kind of got a, a hunger also for producing other artists. Uh, I had been listening to a lot of music, had a lot of music in my ears and in my mind. Produce artists such as Sydney Salmon uh, from Jamaica, Tendai from Zimbabwe, and really started to really hone in on my production skills. Um, and that sort of came on, but in that time I was feeling more of a producer than an artist. So at that time, the production thing was, was a little bit more, more happening for me. And I was kind of not really interested in making records so much, although I would make a song one or two every once in a while. And finally in 2012, I actually put out two albums. One was called Free, which I started here and uh, finished in Paris with a great production team, David F. and Christophe Petit, Future Paradise, as well as a collaboration album uh, with a producer I knew from Washington, D.C. called Dre King. And so that was two albums I produced in 2012 the fifth and sixth albums of my career. And those albums were released in Japan under a record label called Sweet Soul Records. The vibe after 2012, after putting out two records, which I really, really felt uh, passionate about, somehow I found myself back into producer mode, production mode. And uh, from 2012 up to now was really like the beginning of, of a sonic journey for me. Like uh, I had done a reggae album, Sydney Salmon from Jamaica, uh, an album in Spanish with uh, an artist, uh, Monica Moniker, Democracy, which was a, a fusion between France and Ethiopia, MC Samrain, uh, MC from, from Ethiopia, uh, Jonathan Cooper, sort of Ethio jazz vibrations, uh, uh, Nixon Omola from Kenya, uh, Ross Mikey C from, from back in the DMV. So, the list kind of goes on. Wes Felton, we started doing a record through the internet. Uh, so much music, so much music that I was able to be a part of. And it was actually really the learning process that led to the, the current album, which I'm putting out very, very soon, Journey to Forever, uh, which is uh, the project and the, and the point in, in time, which I really want to want to get into and tell you more about. Don't know what I'd do without your tenderness. You make my heart beat. Whenever you're away, every hour feels like a day. To the moon and the stars and back again. You're my lover, my joy, and my best friend. From death to a spot, you'll stay in my heart. You're my only one. You're my only one. You're my love, my joy, and my best friend. From this day on, just till the dawn. You're my only one. You're my only one. You are my only one. So glad you feel the same. Take me to higher ground. And I just love having you around. I've waited all so long for someone that I could sing this song.
three, for my best friend and all we endure. I, I pray, pray we get to love, love until eternity. As a musician, a lot of people ask me, what do I prefer doing, to play or produce? And since I've been in Ethiopia, I found a lot of different creative outlets which sort of satisfy one need, and that is to express myself fully and, and honestly. So it's all kind of a part of a cycle. Uh, and it's performing, it's playing, it's producing. And also now I'm involved in a, in a bag line called Andeken, which means roughly one day in Amharic. And it's basically an ode to the dreamers, people who prepare all their life for a moment in time, like Olympians or people who go to the Grammys or when you play the, the first concert in front of 20,000 people. That's sort of been the, the way my mind and my heart has been for the last 20 years in pursuing this, this music career. I never really wanted to be like a mega, mega superstar based on something I didn't believe in. So I've taken my time and I've done uh, music and, and projects that have that have helped me grow as a person first and foremost as a human being and that's one of the reasons why I chose to, to live and stay in Ethiopia because I felt like there was a, a humanity that existed uh, in Ethiopia that kept my heart and my soul pure and my creativity uh, also reflects that so it's never a hierarchy. I never want to give up one for the other, more or less. I want to learn how to use all the art forms to encourage and to be a part and to, to ignite uh, the fire uh, to any creative thing that I do. Five one. Journey to Forever is my seventh studio album, which I recorded, mixed and mastered at my studio here in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, Ear Studio, East Africa Recording Studio. And it features uh, two great artists on uh, two of the tracks. One of the songs, the title track, Journey to Forever, features Senegalese poet, my great friend, Suleiman Diamanka, uh, as well as uh, Chalina, an amazing angelic voice from Ethiopia, on the next song called Only One. Uh, we also have featured some great musicians from Ethiopia. Uh, Teferi Asefa, premier world-class drummer. Uh, Abby Waldemariam on keyboards. Uh, Jorga Mesfin on saxophone. Keita on violin from California, who spent a lot of time here in Ethiopia. Uh, Tasso on Washington, a traditional Ethiopian flute on one of the tracks. And uh, the album is, is, is a journey. It's a very honest record. It's just about the musical influences and the sounds that I've been able to acquire over the years. Uh, it's definitely an amazing uh, musical journey. Uh, it goes from R&B to Afrobeat uh, to sort of ambient light rock uh, to anthem rock. <laughs> It goes through a lot of definitely uh, different genres of music. I treat music like uh, there's no walls, uh, there's no barriers. Genres are according to how to make the song be the star of, of the music. I'm just the singer, the singer dude. So uh, I'm looking forward to, in October 2nd is the digital release. And shortly after that, we're gonna do an amazing mega concert here in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia to kick off uh, the launch here in Ethiopia. And uh, so much to come. We're hoping to do a lot of concerts, acoustic shows at small cafes, and, and definitely uh, later down the line, the bigger stage where you will really experience uh, the things that I heard in my mind for how the music should be big and powerful and, and, and penetrate the soul. That's that's what this music is about. It's about penetrating the soul, the message, the message inside the music. I'd like to give a very sincere and warm thank you to the people of Ethiopia for being so welcoming and so encompassing of my journey. I'd like to thank the likes of Jordana Kebedem, Emmanuel Mokria for hosting me at Harlem Jazz, Ida Mouline for the beautiful cover art, Samuel Taya for the editing, 
uh, Zio Julian uh, project we just finished up. Uh, and a lot of people, so many people, I hate to uh, leave them out, but if you have been a part of my journey, I would like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I also would, would like to tell you, the people out there, to stay tuned for the upcoming music video that is uh, coming out very, very soon to the song Balloonie Deset. Uh, it's going to be produced by Afro-Asiatic Productions and uh, it's my first Amharic single, uh, which I'm very, very proud to uh, be a part of. Uh, one more person I'd love to give a big shout out to Johnny Raga, who really gave me a shot and an opportunity to be visible amongst the Ethiopian uh, community here in Ethiopia as well as the diaspora abroad. You can find out more about the music at kennyallen.bandcamp.com as well as Kenny Allen on Facebook, Undeken on Instagram, U-N-D-K-E-N, and youtube.com slash Kenny Allen Music. It's gonna all be there. Journey to Forever is launching uh, October 2nd. It's gonna be great. Give thanks, peace and love, God bless y'all.